Welcome to this special edition of the IoT Radar. I will have a meeting with James Adams and James is the Chief Operating Officer of Raspberry Pi and in his role responsible for the development of the new Raspberry Pi Pico board. On this board there is specific silicon, it is developed by Raspberry Pi itself. And I'm having a conversation with James about why a company like Raspberry Pi should decide to, to start developing their own silicon. I hope you all enjoy watching the IoT Radar. Good afternoon, James Adams. You're Chief Operating Officer with, uh, with Raspberry Pi. Busy days for you, I assume? Hi, Vincent. Yes, um, it was a busy, certainly was a busy day yesterday. Um, yeah, I, I'm Chief Operating Officer. I also uh, lead the hardware team at Raspberry Pi. I've been there since 2013, beginning of 2013. So um, quite a long time now since the the trading the trading arm of Raspberry Pi, which is the technology arm, was was actually founded. Sure. And uh, in in your role as uh, Chief Operating Officer, you're also responsible for the whole development of the um, the Raspberry Pi Pico, but I think more interestingly is also the RP2040 processor on it. Yes, so it's been a, an interesting program. Um, it's been a long program actually. We uh, we started actually at the end of, I was looking back at my emails, it was the end of 2016 when we pretty much kicked this kicked this off uh, and, and started talking to various people, started talking to ARM um, and it's been quite a journey. You know, it's a relatively small chip, I guess, especially in physical size. It's it's only two square millimeters of silicon, but um, to build a chip team to do, you know, to build this kind of stuff from scratch, um, you know, takes takes a lot of uh, of uh, time and money, I suppose. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, and engineering, you know, it, it's had a lot of iteration in its uh, gestation. Yeah, that, that that is one of my questions. Um, when does a company like Raspberry Pi uh, decide and why decide to start developing your own silicon. There are so many alternatives, so many controllers available on the market, which, in my idea, can do the same thing. But why is it important to do this development yourself? And building your own silicon has its own advantages. Um, you can control what's in it, of course, because we you know we've put a lot of interesting new features in in the RP2040, um, and you can, can you can um, control the documentation and um, the supply. So it it, it kind of gives us uh, the ability to do this product. Basically, yeah. you know, if if we were going to build it on on somebody else's silicon, there would always have been a compromise, and usually someone else's microcontroller is is already in some kind of development board. So this is a way to do something. You know, with the kind of real Raspberry Pi um, engineering in in it, if you like, and and get the price right down as well, which sure, is obviously yeah, very yeah, important yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, 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 the starting your own development, you you for the RP twenty forty, you've decided to go for the M zero ARM architecture. Um, that that um, is also a specific decision because there are also alternatives. You could think, you know, uh, there are more open source um, architectures and uh, instruction set architectures which you can use. Or, any, any specific reason why you've chosen for the M0 architecture? Well, um, I mean, M0 or M0 plus, which is what we use. So M0 plus is a, a, an evolution of the original M0 with a, a shorter pipeline. Uh, so it's slightly more power efficient uh, and some adjusted instructions. Yeah. Um, so that is basically the smallest, uh, most power efficient microcontroller call the ARM do. Um, the nice thing about it is it's well known and well un understood. So if you go and get your IP from, I mean, without sounding like I'm, I'm sort of um, a salesperson for ARM, it's easy to go get the IP. We know ARM, we have a relationship with them because we use, you know, we use silicon um, on the bigger platforms which contain ARM processors and they just have a, a good um, set of IP. You know, it's a good core, it's well documented, it's easy to use. Um, and and IP that goes around it as well. So you know, yeah, yeah. it was kind of an easy thing for us to do. We like the ARM platform; it's been around a long time. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it, and and they're, and they're just around the corner in Cambridge. And they're in Cambridge, yeah. So I mean, you know, it, you might say, well, why didn't we use Risk Five? Well, I mean, I think it's a maturity thing, uh, but also it's 
you know, we know and, and like ARM, why would we choose anything else? It's kind of more risky, especially for a first product. Okay, um, okay, okay. But you, of course, you're creating expectations if you start your own development and your own tooling and everything on, on uh, the, the ARM platform. Most likely, you know, the expectation is, of course, that, you know, eventual next product, the uh, 20. 50 or the 21 40 or whatever it might that it also is on the arm platform yeah, yeah. um i think we like arm and and they're easy to work with um you know commercially it's 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 a good solution um uh, you know if we risk five is just less mature right if that's yeah. the one you want to think about as a potential other option um yeah. we're certainly keeping an eye on the risk five space mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know it's interesting to see what's what's happening there so yeah, yeah. Um, i'm not going to say rule anything out particularly but uh, it more comes down to you know what makes the most sense commercially what's easy to integrate you know the, the whole kind of ecosystem which uh, which i think you know arm arm is very good at what, what what do you feel is a typical user case for for this uh, type of board and also if you compare it to you know the many arduinos and the uh, um, Adafruit and Sparkfun and, and you know, we, all, we all have so many development boards. Why at some point should a person say, okay, but this is why I need the Raspberry Pi Pico? Okay, well, as you've probably seen one, they're, they're pretty small and simple. So they're designed deliberately to be more of a breakout for the RP2040 chip. Uh, so they've got an RP2040, a bit of flash, and there's a, a, um, a switch mode power supply on there, but it's all really quite simple um, and flexible, right? So the board was designed to be basically as cheap as we could make it while still being something we could um, build at high quality um, uh, at this sort of low cost. So actually every Pico board goes through automated build and test, fully tested, and then it's packed onto uh, tape and reel. In fact, I had to, I've got some props here, so I don't know. This is a bit of... yeah bit of the packaging of course, and on yeah. the reel is also a nod to the other thing this is designed for it's it's designed for for you know for for hobbyists and educators and people who are just getting started with micros but also it's designed for you know for for um, industrial use cases as well or people who want to use it in products so the yeah. pico itself is actually a simple module that you could solder into a product if you didn't want to use the the bare chip and all of the other componentry you can you can solder it down as a surface mount module and it comes in a reel so you can you know put it into a pick and place machine and actually build build things with it if you like nice nice opportunity yeah i have not thought about it but that is indeed the, 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 the nice thing about having it on a reel yeah now about the price because you almost giving this board away for nothing, you know? I see a price, you know, uh, the street price, $4, is that true, or? Uh, yep, $4, uh, so that's pre-tax and shipping, of course, but um, of course. Yeah. it's, you know, $35 for a Raspberry Pi, that's also pre-tax and shipping. That's the way we price things. Um, I mean, it's just the Raspberry Pi thing, right? It allows people to get hold of it, right? The, the, the more inexpensive you make it, and the more available you make it, the more people can just pick it up and use it.